Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Juan, I am Just One Reader, and I am here for the second part of my May book haul. You can go and check out the first part of this book haul. This May has been a kind of crazy month in terms of buying books. I sort of deal with it as I usually do, which is without any kind of guilt whatsoever. I just roll with it. I don't really buy a lot of books but when I do, I just go bonkers. I go banana shit crazy. I just, man, I just go. Um, so May has been a, a pretty rough month for my wallet. I have purchased so far 22 and there are more books coming in the mail. So I will have to make a third part to this book haul. But without any further ado, I'm just gonna start because there are some books in this book haul. Um, so the first one is The Impossible Fairy Tale. This has a beautiful cover. This is by Han Yuju, if that's how I can be allowed to pronounce it. It's published by Grey Wolf Press. I really like how this book has been published. Uh, the quality of the paper and the font, everything seems to suggest that there's been a lot of love and care put into the publishing of this book. I know nothing really about this one. I sort of have heard some mixed reviews, mostly positive, but some of them have been disappointing reviews. Um, so basically what I've heard is that this book is divided in two halves or two stories, two parts, and the first part is supposed to be really good and then the second one, not as great but I still am willing to give this one a, a go. And it just sounds really, really weird, like undescribably weird. So I will report back when I read it. The next book is What Belongs to You. This is a novel by Garth Greenwell. And this is a book that I've heard excellent reviews, just fantastic comments on this book. So I've kind of saved it. I've kind of stayed away from the synopsis or hearing or reading a lot about it because I don't want to spoil it. I just want to go in blindly because I feel like this is that type of book. All I know is the basic premise. It's about this American teacher who pays another man for sex. Um, so it seems like really gritty and just with a lot of richness, very dark richness to it. It says, What Belongs to You is a stunning debut novel of desire and its consequences. With lyric intensity and startling eroticism, Garth Greenwell has created an indelible story about the ways in which our pasts and cultures, our scars and shames can shape who we are and determine how we love. So I'm really excited for more of this dark, greedy, heavy hitting stuff. The next book is one that I am so excited to read because I feel it's gonna be one of those books that are just gonna blow me away. I feel like this is just a match made in heaven for me. And it is The Bookshop Book by the lovely one and only Jen Campbell. Um, this is of course not a new release. This is very popular, people love it. It's been around for quite some time, years actually. Um, but I have never gotten around to reading it. I, I could never get a copy. It was unavailable from Amazon forever until it finally was available and I immediately purchased it. And it's so beautiful. Also, the, the object in itself is beautiful. The, the cover is amazing. The texture, um, the way, the construction of the book is just really, really nice. And here on the flaps, it says, every bookshop has a story. We're talking about bookshops in barns, disused factories, converted churches, and underground car parks. Bookshops on boats, and on buses, and in old, run-down railway stations. From the oldest bookshop in the world to the smallest you could imagine, the bookshop book explores the history of books, talks to authors about their favorite places, and looks at more than 300 weirdly wonderful bookshops across six continents. This book is a love letter to bookshops all around the world. Need I say more? The next book I have is Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. Um, this is uh, a novel or novella that has been quite popular as of late on booktube. Um, 
I really wanted to read this in Spanish because it's originally written in Spanish. Samantha Schweblin is an Argentinian author and uh, she's quite well known in Argentina. However, this book, Fever Dream, was unavailable in Spanish. I, it's just ridiculous that it was easier for me to get this book in a, in a translation, an English translation, than the original Spanish. I mean, come on, what's wrong with the Spanish publishers? There's just no way that I could have gotten this book uh, except for the English translation, but whatever. It's a beautifully published book. I really like just how weird the cover is. And I have heard, and pretty much everyone has told me that this book is a book that you just have to pick up when you have one afternoon available to re for reading sit down and just devour it in one go, one sitting non-stop. So that's what I'm gonna do. Next up is another book that has also been making its rounds uh, on booktube and it's been very popular. I've heard nothing but, well, almost, almost only positive reviews. Um, the only person that gave it a negative review was Conrad from Seven Days at Sea, whose opinion I really appreciate and really take into account but I still want to read this book and see what I make of it. And this is uh, Heather O'Neill's The Lonely Hearts Hotel, which has just a breathtaking cover. I mean, I just, I'm filled with epilepsy when I see this cover. Um, it's a beautiful cover, just look at it. And uh, something else that really sold me on this book is that the back has um, some comments, some praise, by these authors, Emily St. John Mandel, Kelly Link, Miranda July, and Helen Oyeyemi. How could I not buy this book? Next up is a nonfiction, and this is Woody, the biography by David Ivanier. Woody Allen is, of course, my favorite film director. I have not seen all of his films because, uh, let's face it, that's a tall order, but I have watched many of them and I just love his way of not just directing and writing and acting and just making films but his way of approaching life because I am a psychoanalyst in training I have a very specific view on the world and on the human condition which is the psychoanalytical view very Freudian and post Freudian I could get into another uh, I, I can I could get into the world's biggest longest tangent, but I'm not going to. Suffice it to say that Woody Allen just has that specific view, that chip, that way of looking into people and looking into everyday situations that I just completely relate to and I, I really identify with. And I know that I am not a very nonfiction type of reader, however, a biography of Woody Allen is exactly the type of nonfiction that I am willing to read and I hope I love it. Next up is a children's middle grade novel, which is something that I hardly ever pick up nowadays. I usually buy different stuff, not middle grade, but this one was just so recommended to me, so recommended to me. Um, Dan Martin from Dan Martin Likes You made a separate review for this one and he just loved it and he complete, completely sold it. So I had to pick it up and this is The Bear and the Nightingale by uh, Catherine Arden. This is inspired by uh, some Russian folklore. It's middle grade, it's fantasy, it's fairy tale influenced. What's not to like? The next book on my book haul is Zero Veil. This is by Steve Erickson. This is beautifully published by Europa Editions. And I know very little about this book, surprisingly little. All I know is it's about this guy in Los Angeles and he is kind of a movie film industry freak. And um, that's pretty much all I know. I've heard that this is just an amazing book, uh, literary, but very weird. And uh, I just read and watched some reviews of this and everyone seemed to speak very, very highly about it. So it just, it called me. The next book is a book that I had seen for some years on bookstores, but 
it just never really appealed to me until right now because I must have watched some reviews or read some reviews somewhere and I was just really attracted to it now. Um, this is um, Beauty is a Wound. Beauty is a Wound, there it is, by Eka Kurniawan. And I'm just going to read you some of, the, some of the blurb in here. It says, An unforgettable, all-encompassing epic of Indonesian history, magic, and murder. Every detail seems essential to depicting Indonesia's tragic past. Upon finishing the book, the reader will have the sense of encountering not just the history of Indonesia, but its soul and spirit. This is an astounding, momentous book. Beauty is a Wound is a novel making a claim about capturing a nation, constituting a retort from the present to the dark times, while also acknowledging that the dark times may not yet be over. And I read the first line of this book and I bought it because look at this. It says, Chapter 1. One afternoon on a weekend in March, Dewey Ayu rose from her grave after being dead for 21 years. And we are almost done with the book haul. I just have two more. This is Through Black Spruce by Joseph Boyden. Uh, he is a very, very popular and very highly acclaimed uh, Canadian writer. And this is, from what I gather, um, this is sort of takes place on two different landscapes or settings. One of them, New York, and the other one, like the Canadian wilderness. He is very popular for having written The Orenda. I haven't read any jo Joseph Boyden before, but I saw a review of this book by Max from Well Done Books, and I thought to myself, this book has to be in my life. And the last book on this part of the book haul is The Trouble with Goats and Sheep. This is by Joanna Cannon. I don't like this cover as much as I do the original British one, but I, you know, it's still a pretty beautifully constructed and published book. Um, this is a, it says, part coming of age story, part mystery. The Trouble with Goats and Sheep is a quirky and utterly charming debut about a community in need of reconciliation and two girls learning what it means to belong. I've heard that this is quite slow paced, but just charming and delightful. Um, and yeah, Simon from Simon uh, from Savage Reads loved this book, loved it. Um, he loved it so much, in fact, that he made me love it without having actually read it. So Simon just, he has a way with words, that he can just do that. Um, so Simon, I bought this completely because of you. Also, Jen Campbell really liked it. Was it Jen Campbell or was it Mercedes? I think it was Mercedes. So I figure this is that type of book that you cannot go wrong with. You just, you'll, you'll just like it, period. So um, I will report back when I read it. And that's it. That was the second part of my May book haul. Now, if you were wondering what am I reading right now, I am currently not reading novels or anything big. I have decided not to read anything like that until I can really dedicate time to it. So basically until July when I quit my job and I can have more free time. In the meantime, I am pretty much just reading short things. I am currently reading this collection of short stories. Uh, this is an anthology of short stories. This is the Best American Short Stories, edited by Jennifer Egan. This is the 2014 edition, and I am really enjoying it. I really love the style that this short stories seem to uh, have. And I will make, at the end of the year, I will make a wrap up of all the short story collections that I read in 2017. So thank you very much for watching. I am Just One Reader and I will see you on the next video.